Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the crime to end all crimes. And it is time for episode 19 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer, in which we are going to finish interviewing or perhaps interrogating Crimson Acid, although I suspect, given as we are paying her for her information, it's neither of those things, but some as yet undefined other method of... of uh, Wait, hang on, no, there is definitely an analogue in uh, police activity for what I'm doing. I am paying a criminal informant. Fantastic, great, now that we all know where we are in a sort of an existential sense, let's continue. So we're going to talk to Crimson Acid, and then we're probably going to do an evidence review, and then we shall see where we go from there. I might go and talk to Aikiko, uh, and attempt to get them to let me talk to Henry Division, or I might do a little bit more rummaging in the bins in this zone. We'll see what happens and how long it takes to squeeze every piece of information out of Crimson Acid. And uh, let's not dwell too too long on squeezing Crimson Acid. So, uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Crimson Acid. You may notice my voice is a little crunchy today. That's because I am yet again sick, because I am sick forever, and I'm starting to think I'll never be better. Which is bad for me, but potentially good for you guys, because it means that I will never leave the house again, and therefore we'll just sit here making Let's Plays forever. So, there's a whole bunch of uh, things we have yet to ask about. Mostly alibis, but uh, after we've got everything else we can out of Crimson Acid, we're going to come back around and ask about the connections between her and the disappearance of K-Hax, of which there are several. Did you see Yuri last night? Yuri handles Lydia on the last night of the island. You should, you should speak to her. Fair enough. Did I ask? Did I ask her about this one already? Can you tell me anything about the marshal stationed at the first seal? I already told you. One of the guards was Voth, Aikiko's lover. Aikiko must be pretty upset. You haven't heard anything strange about the marshals on the night. Things take a little while to flow downstream. There's no need to wait for loose lips. Okay, so it sounds like some of these I've already had information. Did you see the architect last night? I heard she was hanging out with Witness last night. You should ask her. It seems odd. And did you see the doctor last night? I know something about his clinic, but I won't charge you. Go find the back door. What? Always talking about uh, Doom Jazz's back door. We know that he's a relentless slut, but uh, I suppose it's not unreasonable that he might like it in the ass. You never know. Did you see Lydia and Sam last night? Lydia should have been doing her fairy woman duties. The log at the gates should confirm something about that. Well, that was already on the to-do list. What do you know about the second holy seal? One of the secrets I've never been able to get my hands on. Oh, fair enough. This is going a lot faster than I expected. Well, what do you know about the escape last night? Secrets about that haven't worked their way to me about Henry's escape. Oh, that's, uh... That, well, that line slipped through the copy editing, clearly. If you think there's more to it, then there seems there might be physical evidence near the scene. If what the report says is true, the only way to the council building is through the Syndicate HQ. If he went through there, he'd have been logged. Check the Nightmare computer logs. Well, as we'll see shortly, we have checked the Nightmare computer logs and he's not in them. So that's all the uh, case files. So let's just see what happens if we hang out before we uh, accuse her of anything. Got time for a chat, Crimson? You find yourself on an island full of criminals, lady. Are you one of them? A criminal plotting the downfall of paradise? Not for the crime you're investigating. What does that mean? All shops need stock. My trade is secrets. I don't have a wholesale supplier I can get deliveries from. Why you? Boredom, mostly. I never should have let Montserrat convince me to be an idol. There's nothing wrong with being an idol. There isn't, but it's not the life for me. I was caught up wanting to help the Syndicate, and I gave up a life I loved. We're the Syndicate, the ruling elite. It's easy for everyone in that tower to think that crime is something everyone does but them. I'm just keeping a record. Which you sell. 
You're the one buying. Well, that seems fair. And I believe we've got all of the Starlight upgrades we can get. I wonder if this will just give me random Starlight skins that... I mean... Maybe... It, hmm. It's only just occurred to me that the Starlight skins I get from the uh, fast travel points might be randomised. I assumed that everyone gave a specific one, but maybe, maybe it does just give you them completely at random. Still, I want one. Enjoy. Yeah, it looks like I can just buy as many as I like. Oh! Investigation Freak. Can she breathe life back into paradise? This one is concept art that appears on loading screens, which is a nice little detail. And I edit out the loading screens mostly. That's why you may not have seen it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to ask her about the tuft of hair before I just accuse her of killing K Hax. Although I do still have my pet theory that K Hax killed himself in some kind of a devotional act of worship. I found a tuft of your hair in Kayhax's workshop, and that puts you at the scene of a disappearance. Come on, lady, you know that doesn't prove anything. We need to talk, Acid. You never call me Acid. Why was Kayhax accusing you of stealing the key to the second holy seal? Shit. This makes you a prime suspect, so spill it. I promise I didn't kill the council, I need you to know that. Get on with it. The holy seals are the holy grails of secret hunters, they're so locked down and under wraps. I was losing sleep each night thinking about them. I knew Kayhax designed the second seal, so I started talking to him. I also knew he was obsessed with me. Obsessed? More than I expected, I thought he was just horny for me. But he had got it into his head that if we achieve perfection on the next island, he'd ascend to heaven. His diary called you his queen in the astral heaven. Good snooping, lady. Since I'm blessed by the gods, he coveted me as a trophy queen. The guy was out of his mind. You keep using the past tense. I'm not stupid. If the council got on the bad side of a killer and the person who designed their security is missing, he's dead or he might as well be. Did you do it? Please. Even if he was going to squeal to Montserrat? I talked him down. I strung him along in a relationship. I could persuade him to do almost anything. Except give you the secret to the second holy seal. There was a data key he guarded. I took it and made a copy. And how did you copy it? You ask a lot of questions. Someone in Masahiro Heavy Industries owed me a favour. That favour was an hour in one of their high-end computer labs. It turned out to be a heavily encrypted digital key on a flash drive. I put the key back in his workshop, apologised profusely, and did something to take his mind off it. Did you use the key? No. I know where and how, though. The obelisk's on the beach, the key works on them. And that's the second seal secret? No, there's more, but I don't know what. Why didn't you use the key? Bad vibes, lady, I could feel it in the air. Things were happening on the island. This still makes you a suspect, Crimson. I know. Interesting. So she's still a suspect for K-Hacks, but she's, I mean, well, she says she didn't use the key. That doesn't necessarily mean she wasn't involved in the crime itself. Although, there's not a ton of evidence against her. Or really, there's not a ton of evidence involving her at all, really. Right, well, that seems to be everything that we can get out of her. May your journey be endless. And may you reach the moon. Oh, we were talking all day. Right, well, that's put me at a little bit of a loss. I think I'll find somewhere quiet on the beach, away from any beeps and boops. And then dive straight into my good buddy Starlight. So, in terms of reviewing the evidence, I'm not going to go through every little scrap of information. I'm just going to go over what I'm thinking so far. Aikiko and uh, Dr. Doomjazz are my prime suspects currently. Because, well, Aikiko is... Uh, Aikiko has a logical motive. It makes sense, if it's true, uh, that she's fed up with her men dying and she wants to make them immortal, but the council won't go for it. So, if she kills the council, then A, she might be in a position in the future to just force that to become true, and she might also 
you know, <laughs> it's the, uh, to make an extremely crass comparison, sort of 9-11 conspiracy theory logic, you know, fake an attack on the United States so that the United States has a justification to go do terrible things elsewhere. Uh, or at least that's one of the uh, conspiracist theories behind what was extremely... <laughs> I've tied myself in a knot here because the thing about 9-11 is that just the story as told without any conspiracy shit in at all, it at all makes perfect sense. <laughs> Um, like, straight up, it, it, it just, it, a bunch of guys talked about flying a plane into a building for a long time, and then they flew a plane into a building, like, <laughs> what's to be confused about? Anyway, that's besides the point, which is that, um, Aikiko has a motive, and her plan to capitalize on these events broadly makes sense. Um, it's a little bit tenuous, but it's not more tenuous than any of the other, uh, underlying motives behind any of the other people's actions. All of the uh, courses of events that people would capitalize on this tragedy for, I say tragedy in inverted commas, are uh, pretty tenuous chains of logic. So, but, that, but besides that point, her plan, or at least the plan we are putting together for achieving the, uh, the crime to end all crimes, makes the most sense out of anything I've seen so far. She's in a position to have switched out the guard bodies. She has a motive to not want uh, the martial guards to be killed and therefore to have put some uh, unfortunate uh, dipshit citizens in those costumes and slaughtered them. And in addition, she's been incredibly obstructive to my investigation, which both is suspicious and also is what you would do if you did the crime, which is two ways of saying the same thing. But yeah, she's... Um, She's in position to have achieved all of these supposedly impossible things. She's also good with a sword, so she would definitely have slaughtered, been able to slaughter uh, anyone she wants to, basically. And I keep saying she, although she is actually a they, so apologies to any Aikiko 14s in the audience. Um, but, yeah, so they basically have the know-how, they have the motive, they have a plan that most, makes the most sense if they did it. Um... And in addition, they were the person who found Henry Division. And there, there were only eight minutes between Henry Division's escape and Henry Division's murder, uh, doing the murders, supposedly. And there were only three minutes between the murders and Aikiko capturing him. So that's a total of 11 minutes from breakout to capture. There is also no, ev she hasn't said anything about how she captured him, how they captured him. Uh, they haven't said anything about how they, like, tracked him down. They just happened to run into him outside of the council building covered in blood. They're also in a position to have set Henry Division up in the first place. They're the one who has access to his cell, after all. So, uh, that's where my suspicions are lying currently. However, I think Dr. Doom Jazz was probably involved because we know that he is carrying a torch for Aikiko and we do also know that, well, he was uh, denied the opportunity to do an autopsy and didn't seem to have questioned it. We also know that his alibi is busted because he says he was in his clinic all night and while the front door says he didn't leave, the back door is busted. So uh, he could easily have gone in and out. That said, <clears throat> if his motive is that he is in love with Grand Marshal Aikiko 14 and wants to help them do whatever it is they are planning to do, there's kind of a flaw in the plan there because, uh, I mean, Aikiko is or was in a relationship with one of their, uh, one of their men, their, uh, general or something. It's here somewhere. Uh, it's probably under the crime details, I forget. Anyway, but, um, yeah. So, given that, like, Doom Jazz isn't a soldier, as far as I know. He may have been one in the past, but he isn't one now. Uh, so he's not the kind of person that Aikiko falls in love with. That said, one-sided attractions have definitely resulted in people doing a lot of stupid things throughout human history. In addition, he does have a secret motive that Crimson Acid told us about, which is that he just has reason to resent Leader Montserrat. So, if the person he's got an unfortunate fixation on says, hey, I want to kill Leader Montserrat, maybe he would go along with it for both of those reasons. Now, Yuri, I suspect, may have been involved in that conspiracy as well. I don't think a single actor doing this makes sense as a theory. I think that there must have been at least two and maybe more people involved. So my main theory is that it was Aikiko and Jazz. 
However, Yuri might also have been involved. The main reason I think this is that there was a brief communications blackout, which uh, he's in the position to have done. He may be vindicated by the uh, evidence, or he may not, we don't know. But the fact that he wants onto the council and has been denied it a lot, and is generally kind of a quick-tempered kind of a guy, I could see him have been being brought into this plan in some way. However, I don't have any direct evidence against him. Uh, I mostly just know that he has a strong motive and that his plan is relatively logical. Um, or at least his plan to capitalize on the uh, on the results of all this. With regards of, uh, to Lydia and Sam, first off, I don't really understand why they're considered to be a single person. Just because they're married doesn't mean they can't have um, separate motives and separate activities and so on. Uh, but yeah, with regards to Lydia and Sam, they have a history of regime change. I can place Lydia at one of the seals, and uh, I know that Sam is involved in some kind of illegal blood distilling operation. However, <clears throat> all of that is either unrelated or circumstantial, so I don't really have any direct way to tie them in beyond one person saying that maybe they want to leave the islands. I find it hard to believe they couldn't find a way out that didn't involve uh, mass murder. So, uh, that leaves Carmelina, who does also have a strong motive. However, the way that she would capitalize on this event uh, to achieve her motive doesn't add up. Uh, she might be resentful of the fact she's not allowed to be on the council, even though she has supposedly crafted the uh, perfect world at last. That makes sense. Um, maybe if she kills all the council, she'll get to be on the next council. But that's a pretty weak way to capitalize on this plan and there's no other direct uh there's no other direct connection between her and uh the events as far as i can tell except for the fact that we know that she and witness set up some kind of a demon studying lab at some point which brings me to witness himself we know that witness suffers from psychic death scream trauma we also know that witness is related to that demon laboratory in some way and we also know that that demon laboratory is very close to where Henry Division went all demony, however many years ago it was. However, his motive is, as far as we know, simply that the end times are coming and uh, why not hurry them on their way, which is one of the weakest motives we've seen so far. Um, and frankly, I, I don't buy it. My personal suspicion is that uh, Carmelina and Witness were experimenting in some way on demons back in the day, and that this some in some way resulted in Henry Div Henry Division's demon subversion uh, and his possession subsequently by a demon. Um, I think that perhaps they were trying to create a weapon for some reason, or perhaps just to understand demons, which resulted in Henry Division becoming a weapon that was then later picked up by Aikiko. I don't currently suspect that they created this. Uh, created Henry as a weapon on purpose for the benefit of Aikiko. However, if there is evidence of that that I uncover, that ties them into the plot as well, which would put, which would be a stronger connection than that I have for Yuri Knight at the very least. There is also uh, the fact that um, pointed at Henry Division's cell was a audio sniper rifle device thingy, which uh, was playing recordings of psychic death, dream, death scream trauma at him. Which seems like it could be related to Witness, only because Witness is the only other person who suffers from psychic death scream trauma. But whether that means it's uh, related to Witness or related to Doom Jazz is anyone's guess. So, that is the review of all of my suspects and suspicions so far. My, I think it was probably Aikiko and Doom Jazz, barring any uh, really astonishing evidence that comes up in the rest of the investigation, which is entirely possible. Um, they may have been assisted by Yuri Knight, uh, they may have been assisted by the Witness, but uh, I, think the, I think the Witness connection is probably fairly tenuous. Additionally, Witness and Carmelina may have created Henry Division as a weapon, but that's total speculation on my part at the moment, so they may also be or not be involved. In addition, I have not yet put down my idea that this is a conspiracy involving every single member of the surviving Syndicate, but um, as yet... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have enough red thread on my serial killer board in the back of my, uh, you know, detective's office yet to be able to figure that stuff out. There is one final thing that doesn't add up with regards to Carmelina and Witness. They were both together at the end, but someone told me that the Witness 
is completely paranoid and will never ever take a phone call when anyone else is in the same room as him. If they were waiting to be phoned uh, by Yuri to be dispatched uh, via Lydia to the uh, Paradise Gates, uh, you know, obviously he could just leave the room to take the phone call, but it's still a little bit odd that they would uh, be doing that, especially considering they supposedly began to stop associating so strongly with each other a while in the past. So there's various bits of uh, assorted evidence that I haven't fit into any particular plan or uh, any kind of suspicion. And there's various different mysteries that are not yet solved that I would kind of like to know about, such as the blood chiller. But for the time being, that's my thoughts on the case. Which means that we are left with my to-do list. Obviously, I still need to talk to the witness, and I still need to talk to Aikiko and Henry, if I can get Aikiko to let me talk to Henry in the first place. In addition, I need to go back to the power plant to uh, give a ghost his ID card so that he can uh, have his unfinished business finished and move the fuck on. I need to ask Sam about that distillery. I need to go investigate the graveyard, because... If uh, the, the corpses that were supplied to replace the two martial guards uh, were sourced from somewhere, maybe they were citizens, or maybe they were corpses brought from the graveyard. After all, this could have taken place after the citizen slaughter ritual. In addition, I need to figure out what's up with uh, seals 3 and 4, and as a part of figuring out what's up with seals 3 and 4, I definitely need to go uh, rummage around on the beach which there is some kind of an obelisk thing we can interact with. In addition, I should probably just try and traverse the second seal to see what happens, because um, I now have a space helmet and therefore can try and do that. Although I can't necessar necessarily navigate through it. I'll also, after that point, need to run around and re-interview everyone to try and cross-examine them with all of the information that I've gathered so far. But that's pretty much my plan as it goes for the time being. So... Uh, that's gonna have turned out to have been the entire episode, which is a weird way to phrase that, but whatever. So, join me next time, where I will potentially rummage in some bins, or just go straight and talk to Aikiko, and hopefully also Henry. But that is going to be all from me for today, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, please do join me again next time for more of this Paradise Killer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.